Today we're going to look at what does no solution or infinitely many solutions look like using elementary row operations. Solutions of a linear system. We have seen systems of linear equations that we considered so far, and they've had only one solution. However, we know that a linear system may have one solution, no solutions, or infinitely many solutions. So one solution scenario is if each variable in each row echelon form is a leading variable, the system has exactly one solution. So everything we've done so far, we've seen um, examples of one solution scenarios uh, using either a three by three matrix or a two by two matrix using Gauss Jordan elimination or regular Gaussian elimination. We find this by using, again, we can use back substitution or you can use Gauss-Jordan elimination, which we practiced um, a couple of days ago. Now, for a one solution scenario, here is the case um, that we're looking for. Notice that at the bottom we have here z equals to 8. So since we have one solution, we can use either back substitution or we can continue making these numbers up here a triangle of zeros so that way we can get um, to the answer without having to use back substitution. But we know that we can also get no solution. So what to look for in a three by three matrix for no solution. If the row echelon form contains a row that represents the equation zero equals C, which is a false statement where C is not zero, the system has no solution. A system with no solution is called inconsistent. So let's take a look at the scenario of using, let's say Gaussian elimination. Um, we have our triangle of zeros here. We have our ones in the diagonal except for the last row. And notice it says zero equals one. This is a false statement. So if you get a false statement in the last equation, or the last row in this case, then therefore you end up with no solution. So again, you look at row three using Gauss-Jordan or Gaussian elimination, you end up with a false statement, meaning that zero is gonna equal to some random number. It could be one, it could be any number, 18, 15, whatever it is. Now for infinitely many solutions, if the variables in the row echelon form are not all leading variables, and if the system is not inconsistent, then it has infinitely many solutions. This system is called dependent. So if we take a look at the matrix and we use Gaussian elimination, we will notice that we'll have our row, our diagonals of ones, and then we end up looking at row number three, and row three has all zeros in it. So notice that we have a true statement, zero equals zero. So when we see this scenario happen, um, then this means you have infinitely many solutions. So let's take a look at an example of a system with no solutions. So this one says to solve the system. So we know we're gonna be using either Gaussian elimination or Gauss-Jordan elimination, either case. Let's take a look at what happens. So first we want to augment the matrix. So here is the augmented matrix. Take all of the leading coefficients that are important and our um, constants and write it in our matrix form. Now I noticed that I wanna get again a one in the diagonal. So I have a one in row one and a row in, and one in row three. So let us first take row one, subtract, row three and put it back in row three. So if I take row one and I subtract it from row three, we're going to end up getting a zero in row three for x. So we get the first row is exactly the same. The second row, we haven't done anything with it, so I'm leaving it the same. But row three becomes zero, negative one, negative one, negative eight because I took row one and I subtracted it from row three. 
Again, you can go back and you can stop the video or pause it, and you can go ahead and do the math yourself. One minus one, negative three minus a negative eight. Remember, a negative and a negative become positive. Negative two minus three, and then 12 minus 20 is how we end up with that row three. Let's keep going. Next, I wanna take two times row one, and I want to subtract it from row two and put it back in row two. The purpose of this is when I subtract those, this X here in the second row will go away and turn into zero. So notice that I put those red numbers in there. Um, that basically are the numbers that I multiplied by two in the first row. And again, that's just for us who are visual learners, you know, that need to see the numbers and that way you know where I'm getting the subtraction from. So let's take a look at what we get as our result. So again, we leave row one the same, and it's going to be row two that gets affected because we're taking two times row one, subtracting it from row two and putting it back in row two. So again, if you take a look at row two, you can use the red number and then the row two, subtract those numbers, 2 minus 2, negative 6 minus a negative 5, 4 minus 5, and then 24 minus 14. We end up with this new row 2. All right. This is just a continuum of the last slide, so I just did that quickly. Um, now I want to go ahead and take row 2, subtract it from row 3, and put it back in row 3. Um, because again, we want to get a zero for the y value in the third row because we want to get z by itself. So we want x to be zero, we want y to be zero, and we want z to be some number. So I took row two and I subtracted row three, put it back in row three. So the first row is the same. The second row is the same. But the third row becomes zero, zero. And then we get 18 because we're taking 10 and we're subtracting a negative 8. So that ends up being 10 plus 8, which we end up with 18. So look at what we have. Since row 3 concludes that 0 equals 18, and this is a false statement, we have a scenario where we have no solution. So if, again, you end up with 0 equals to some random number. That means you have a false solution or a no solution scenario. All right. Now, this next example is one with infinitely many solutions. We're going to approach it the same way we did the no solution scenario using elementary row operations. So the first thing I want to do is augment the matrix. So I'm going to rewrite this augmented matrix making sure that we wrote all of the correct x values here, all of the correct y values in here, and then all the correct z values. Um, and then again, we wrote our constants correctly also. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take row 2 and add it to row 3 because I noticed that we have a negative 1 in the x value in row 2, and we have a positive row a positive one in the row three, so that's going to easily subtract, and we're going to end up with a zero in row three. So let's take a look at that step. So again, row one stays the same. Row two stays the same, but again, we took row two and added to row three, so therefore we end up with negative one plus one gave us our zero. A zero plus one is one. 7 minus 10 gave us our negative 3, and then 5 minus 4 gave us 1. So again, I'm just rewriting what I had in the last slide. So my next step is I am going to take row 1 and subtract it from 3 times row 2 and put it back in row 2. So I'm going to go ahead and put those numbers in there. Negative 3 times row 2 ends up being 3. 0, negative 21, and negative 15. Again, you can stop or pause the video and multiply negative 3 
times negative one, you get three, negative three times zero, you get zero, et cetera. And that's how I end up with those red numbers. I'm gonna go ahead and take row one and then kind of add it to those. And we end up with row one staying the same. Row two is going to change. So we end up with zero, negative five, 15, negative five, and then row three stays the same. All right, so again, you can pause the video and you can take negative three, add it to three, and you end up with this row two. So let's move on to the next step. I'm now going to take negative one fifth of row two and put it back in row two. The reason why I did this, why I divided row two by negative five, is because row two, each number here is divisible by negative five. So why not do that just to make that row? kind of easier to work with. So we end up with row one being exactly the same. Row two, we divided it by negative five, so we end up with zero, one, negative three, one. And notice row three is also zero, one, negative three, one. So notice how row two and row three are the same. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take row two, subtract it from row three, put it back in row three, and we end up with row one being exactly the same. Row two, exactly the same. And then row three ends up being zero, 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 zero. So since row three gives us the equation, which is a true statement, zero equals zero, we can conclude that this system has infinitely many solutions. So pretty much I've given you an example of no solutions. I've given you one of infinitely many solutions. I have two more examples of each, uh, which I'm gonna do next. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at another example. So here we have um, the variables R, S, and T. Notice how in the first system, the first linear uh, equation, I mean, uh, that it's kind of out of order. So you want to make sure that this is in the correct order. So what I did was I moved R over to this side. I moved negative 8 to this side, and I kind of rearranged it. So you're going to see that when I rewrite it here in a second. So rewrite your system so that it makes sense. So I have negative r plus s plus 2t equals 8. That's the only one that kind of got rearranged so that that way everything corresponds to the next two linear equations. And again, the second row and the third row stayed the same. So let's go ahead and augment our matrix now. So again, we take all of the leading coefficients of the variables that are important in this case, and then we rewrite our constants and again always double check that your numbers are correct that you wrote the negative in the correct spot that you put the zero in the correct spot because if you notice row three we have um that middle s is missing we have r we have t remember when it's missing you write a zero in its place so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take negative row one and put it back in row one. So basically multiply row one by a negative. So we end up with our first row, one, negative one, negative two, negative eight. Second row stays the same, and so does the third row. Next, what I decided to do is multiply four times row one. Um, add it to row two and put it back in row two because if I multiply this by four, four minus four is going to give us our zero and we want to get a zero for x in the second row. So I put those numbers in again to have some visual representation to make the math a little bit easier. And then we just go ahead and add those numbers together and we end up with the following matrix. The first row is going to stay the same. The second row becomes zero, negative two, negative six, and negative 20. 
and then our third row stays the same. Again, you can always pause the video to see where I got this second row by adding the red numbers to the second row and getting that new second row. All right, so again, that is the same matrix from the last slide. Now what I'm gonna do is take th three times row one, add it to row three and put it back in row three. Again, similar to what we did in the last slide, I wanna get rid of the X value in row three. So if I multiply the first row by three, this X added to this X will give me a zero. So we end up with the following after putting the numbers in, that way we can visually see what we're doing mathematically. First row stays the same. Second row stays the same. And the third row, we end up with zero, negative three, negative nine, negative 30. All right, so let's keep moving on. I'm gonna take negative one half of row two and put it back in row two. And the reason for this is because row two, every number here we can divide by a negative two. And so that will make it a little bit easier to get rid of the negative three for the row three value here. I want this to be zero. And I'm hoping to get a one here, but again, we'll see what happens. So row one stays the same. Row two, we divide it by a negative two, we end up with zero, one, three, 10. And the third row stays the same. Again, feel free to pause the video as needed, just to kind of do the math a little slower if you need to. Now I'm gonna take negative one third row three and put it back in row three similar reason to why i did that to row two i'm doing that now to row three each of these numbers here in row three can be divided by a negative three so why not let's make the math easier for ourselves we end up with the following the first row stays the same the second row, again, stays the same, and the third row, we end up with zero, one, three, and 10. And now you could start seeing, okay, um, we got something similar to this in a previous example. Um, second row and the third row are the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and take row two and subtract it from row three. And doing that, the first row stays the same, The second row stays the same, and the third row becomes zero, 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 zero. So like we've seen in a previous example, row three gives the equation zero equals zero, which is a true statement. So we can conclude that this system has infinitely many solutions. So again, as a reminder, if it has infinitely many solutions, you're going to get a true statement in the third row zero 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 and zero okay that happens with a two by two matrix three by three four by four ten by ten whatever it is you're going to end up with that same scenario all right let's try our last example here um, again we're going to see if we can complete um, completely find the solutions of this system um, so first thing we want to do again is augment our matrix it's already written in the correct form but again as a reminder if there are variables missing which there are missing in the second and third row make sure you put the correct zeros in the correct spot so the first row has xyz so we got all our lead coefficients there but our second row is missing z so we put a zero in the place of z and the third row is missing x so we put a zero in the x spot in the third row all right, so now what I'm gonna do is take row one and subtract it from row two. I'm gonna put it back in row two. Again, you can do your math however you want to. Um, you can you know, start with row one and row three, row two and row three. I just thought it was easy to just subtract, might as well row one and row two. So that's the math, that's how I did my algebra. Row one stays the same. 
and we're subtracting row one and row two, so we're going to end up with zero, negative six, two, negative 28, and then row three stays the same. Again, remember that you can stop the video or pause the video and subtract those to make sure that you're kind of getting the same thing I am. All right. The next step I did was I took negative one half row two and put it back in row two because I noticed that all of these numbers in row two can be divided by a negative two. So just to make those numbers easier to work with, that's what I decided to do. So row one stays the same. Row two is going to end up zero, three, negative one, 14, and then row three stays the same. All right, so again, this is the same matrix as the last slide. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to take row two, I'm gonna add it to row three, and I'm gonna put it back in row three because I noticed that these are already opposites of each other, so they're gonna cancel out. So we're gonna end up with row one being the same, Row two will be the same. And row three will end up with zero, 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 four. Again, we've seen an example like this. Since row three concludes that zero equals four, and this is a false statement, we have a scenario where we have no solutions. So again, if you get a false statement at the bottom, because zero cannot equal four, then we have no solutions. So that's pretty much it in regards to today's lesson. Again, I did put um, a web assignment up. It's there for you to do. This would be assignment number 15. Um, so you'll notice that you know the web assign isn't all there because we haven't had um, all our assignments be on web assign. So look out for that. For those of you that aren't watching the videos, um, some of those videos have the questions that I want you to do as an assignment. So if you're looking for your one letter grade bump and you're not doing those assignments, um, you're not going to get, you know, the, the percentage increase. So watch out for that. Okay. Um, that's pretty much it for today. Like I said, have a good day.